Um, I want us to open to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and I want to read this to you. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called the meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called the private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. And the star that they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered uh, the house and saw the child and his with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him then they opened their treasure chest and gave him of gold frankincense and myrrh when it was time to leave they returned to their own country by another route for God had warned them in the dream not to return to hear it that's the word of the lord for us today today my topic of this message is called whose birthday is it okay if i were to ask you today kids especially i know we have a few kids here with us today whose birthday do we celebrate at christmas are they right so let me ask again, whose birthday are we celebrating at Christmas? Jesus. Jesus, amen. We're celebrating the birthday of Jesus. Why is the whole world celebrating the birthday of this baby? Because, because he's God. See, God, who created this whole universe... As the Bible talks about him, lives in the unapproachable light. Did you know that no one has ever seen God? In the Old Testament, it says you cannot see God and live. True. So nobody can see God. He's powerful. He's mighty. He's the creator. He lives in this light. It's like this, kids. Uh, how uh, can you get too close to the sun? No, because if you do, you will die. You will burn. Thank you. So no one can see God. God is just this source of life and source of power and source of energy where our human bodies could not handle. But God did reveal himself at Christmas in the birth of his son, Jesus. Jesus is an invisible form. Jesus is a visible form, I'm sorry, of invisible God. Let me say it again, if I can. <laughs> Jesus is a visible form of an invisible God. The unapproachable God. Listen to me. God is unapproachable till you die. You can see him then. Became approachable to every single human being. God, who is unapproachable to sinners, became approachable to sinners 
through this baby, a vulnerable, approachable baby, Jesus. Kings like to protect themselves. They like to surround themselves with special secret services. They like to surround themselves with soldiers. They don't want to be bothered by regular people. God himself made himself available to regular people. Did you know that the first people to see him was the shepherds? Shepherds were the poorest of the poor. They lived with the sheep. What a life. God became approachable to pagan wise men. I don't know if they believed in the God of the Bible, but they saw something in the sky and they knew that its significance. Somehow they calculated its significance. They were scientists and God became approachable to scientists. He wasn't only approachable to shepherds and, and wise men. He became later approachable to little children. Even the disciples of Jesus got annoyed by that. They got angry and said, whoa, whoa, get them out of here. They're bothering Jesus. And Jesus says, stop. Don't forbid children to come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He wasn't just approachable to the children. He became approachable to Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector and a notable sinner in that country. Jesus went to his house and ate with him. Amen. Not only he became approachable to Zacchaeus, he became approachable to sick people. No king wants to be around a person who has leprosy. Jesus became approachable to people with leprosy. He wasn't just approachable to people with leprosy. One day they brought a prostitute. And he, Jesus became approachable to adulterous women. We know that he was, had a habit of surrounding himself and being approachable by regular people. Religious people were never approachable to sinners. And Jesus, this baby, this God, this visible form of God, that's the only God you're ever going to see on earth is Jesus, became approachable to us today. And, he, and the Bible says Emmanuel, which means God with us. He's with us. He became so approachable to us that by His Spirit, when you believe in Him, He comes and lives inside of you. So your DNA, your spiritual DNA, and His DNA becomes entangled. That's how approachable He is. He is within you if you accept Him as Lord and Savior. That's why we celebrate the birthday of Jesus. He is very important. And you can clap your hands. That's good. <laughs> but in our day, Christmas has become a celebration of us, not Jesus. Kids, let me ask you a question. Um, how many of you love birthday parties? Kids, do you love birthday parties? My daughter keeps talking that it's her birthday almost every time there's somebody else's birthday it's my birthday too we love birthday parties why do we love birthday parties we get presents we get to celebrate people come and give us presents birthday is about if it's my birthday it's about me and i want it to be about me and so but imagine kids and parents if somebody came to your birthday they were preparing for a month buying you gifts they're saying, I'm going to John's birthday, to Tom's birthday, to Mary's birthday. And you heard about that on Facebook. They're all talking about her birthday is coming, his birthday is coming. And then they came to your birthday. They came into your house and uh, they brought some presents. Thank you. Right? They brought some presents. They were excited. They brought some drinks. They brought whatever birthday people do. There was lots of food. And then they took the gifts and started giving it to one another. And didn't give the birthday person a gift. How would you feel? Imagine if they started giving presents to one another but totally forgot about you. And you're standing in a corner kind of sad, right? 
Hey, it's my birthday. Whose? Yeah, not theirs. Thank you. Yeah, oh man, I love interactive preaching. <laughs> it's, it's, it's my birthday. Talk to me. Congratulate me. And see, Christmas a lot of times becomes about family. It becomes about presents. And then we forget the most important reason for Christmas. It's about the person. And that person is Jesus. I'm thinking about December. And I'm thinking this. December would be the worst, gloomiest, most depressing months of the year. If it wasn't for Christmas. Notice how Christmas changed December. The days are short. It's dark. It's cloudy. And in South Dakota, it's cold. We were talking with kids. How did uh, the natives survive in their teepees here? I mean, why would you live here? <laughs> Move south, you know, south, please. But it's cold and, and, and so, but what changes everything about December, and if there was no Jesus, and there would be no Christmas, and there would be no lights, and there would be no gifts, and there would be stories, and there wouldn't be salvation, and we would still all be all depressed like we would be without Christmas. So this Christmas, I want to remind you kids. I want to remind you parents that Christmas, first of all, is about God becoming a baby boy. That's what Christmas is all about. So my, my, my point today to you is don't fall in love with his birthday fall in love with the person don't fall in love with the season fall in love with the reason amen don't fall in love with the season fall in love with the reason and the reason is jesus now am i against gifts no but bible says put him first and everything else will be added plus added unto you notice god never says put him first and then everything will be subtracted that's what religion says put him first sacrifice everything else no that's not what jesus said he says seek first him and everything else will be added unto you amen so so what i'm saying today is put jesus first celebrate him acknowledge him worship him first and then have your presence and then have your family and then have the lights and then go to church and drink hot chocolate and cocoa hot uh, cider drink it all have fun have the agnol eat the fruit cake <laughs> have it all but put him in his rightful place he's in he's a visible form of an invisible god you want to see god jesus thank you i will preach hallelujah Hallelujah means thank you. Okay. I explained it last week. Yesterday I read an interesting story. The title of this story captured my heart. It's a story by a former atheist, Kristen Kirsten Power, Powell. She's a, a lady you see often on Fox News as a contributor. She's a liberal contributor usually. She's representing that side. And uh, she wrote a story with a title like this. Discovering Jesus made me not like Christmas. So that story captured my attention. I was like, I got to read it. And I usually check how long it is. right title is enough sometimes <laughs> low information anyway so i opened this story and my wife went to shop in them somewhere uh best buy okay and i'm sitting in the parking lot and i'm like this is perfect timing i'm gonna read this story she writes a story about her childhood 
where she grew up in a divorced uh, uh, family. So she had two Christmases. She said she had one with her mom, who was an atheist, and she had one with her dad, who was uh, Episcopalian, I believe, and uh, he took her to church once in a while. And she said she loved Christmas. Christmas was her favorite time of the year because people got together. There was Christmas tree presents. There was lights. There was even going to church. She said although she went to church with her dad, she didn't get anything about the church. She didn't understand anything. So it was just something you do and leave. One day in her teenage years, she came to her dad and asked, Dad, do you believe in God? Because dad was the one who dragged her to church. And tell me about God. Is this real? She asked him a question. And he said, I actually don't believe in it anymore. Going to church, he still didn't, he didn't believe in God anymore. And so she said that totally destroyed her faith. Later, she moved to college, got a great education on the East Coast in New York area. She, she said all of her friends were liberal with a position of uh, atheistic position. I don't believe in God. Now, if you're liberal here, I love you. Welcome. You're always welcome here. You can belong before you, you become, okay? You can listen. And so she uh, she's totally doesn't believe in God. And then she meets a man, a young man, and she falls in love with him. And uh, one, he goes to church, and she's like, yeah, you do your thing. I'll do my thing. And she's thinking he is just like one of those Christmas and Easter um, Christians. She's like, that's my, like my dad. Yeah, I'll be fine with that. That's like my dad. We're, I'm fine with that Christianity. You know, the, <laughs> and so she's like, I'm fine with that Christianity. And then one day he says to her, do you believe that Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? And she said, that's crazy. Why would I believe that? That's stupid. And one day, and then he says, I, I don't think I can marry somebody. <laughs> he pulled that on her. <laughs> Who doesn't believe like I believe? And so she's like, well... I like you. Do you see a future with me? He says, I see a future with you. So finally, somehow, he convinced her to go to church with her. She goes to church with him, and she goes to church, uh, the Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York. Um, the pastor is Tim Keller, if you know him. The guy is super brainiac. I mean, he'll, like, give you all the evidence you need. And so she says she fell in love, and for one year, she started going to church and she said, after a while, the evidence was overwhelming for Jesus to be who he is. And he said, she said, I believed it with my head. I accepted Jesus with my head, but I didn't have the heart experience. How many of you know you can believe in Jesus with your head and not have an experience? And so she said one day she was traveling to Thailand. And she was praying, God, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. I don't want to just know you with my head. I want to know you. Like these stupid Christians or crazy Christians know you. Right? <laughs> and, then so, and so what happened was she went to Thailand. And in Thailand she has a dream. Jesus appears to her in a vision. And says, here I am. She said she freaked out. Like she was so afraid. She doesn't describe that experience too much. She calls her boyfriend who's a Christian. Right? Calls her boyfriend and uh, she can't reach him. Later, she finds out that he broke up with her <laughs> that same day. <laughs> and then she said, something happened to my heart. I couldn't deny what I saw, who I saw. And she said, I realized that God used him to bring me to him. Uh, and he's got me from here. So she came to New York. She found a Bible study. And she said she fell in love with Jesus so much that her heart changed and that's when she said she started hating Christmas <laughs> because she said when she looked at Christmas and what it has become it has not become about this person this God incarnate it became about materialism it became about presents and family and lights and everything else and nothing of Jesus it's like having somebody come to your birthday party and ignore you all night it's like having somebody come to your birthday celebration and don't even talk to you. And that's the kind of world we live in. And I don't want this church to know Jesus like that. I want you and He wants to know you. He wants to know you personally. He wants to have a relationship with you. 
See, when you know Jesus personally, when you <coughs> have a relationship with him personally, everything changes. Now, am I against gifts? No. Bring me one if you have one for me. <laughs> am I against family? No. Family is the most important thing you have in this world after Jesus. Am I against gifts? No. Have your gifts after Jesus. Put him first. And notice this is not even an offering message. This is just surrender your life to him completely. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Whose birthday it is? Jesus. So today I want to do something. Something that we don't do a lot in our homes anymore or our churches anymore. I want to bow down to him like those wise men did. They bowed down to him and they worshiped him. And I want Christmas to be about worship because that's really what it's all about. King Herod had an opportunity to see God. Listen to me. King Herod had an opportunity to see God, but his heart was not pure. And Bible says, blessed are pure in heart for they will see God. When you put your focus on Jesus today, you'll get much more than what you're focusing on. The joy will be complete and full. When you get Jesus, everything else tastes better. When you get Jesus, everything else feels better. Family feels better. Gifts feel better. If you get Jesus, you get everything else added onto you. It's like salt, right? You eat something, it's something's missing. When you add salt, it tastes better. Or whatever, your ketchup or whatever for you. A1 sauce, right? It just tastes better. Jesus is the one we need and the one we miss. And so today, as you celebrate Christmas, may your heart be filled with joy like the hearts of the wise men who bowed down before him and worshipped him. If you don't mind, you don't have to, but if you don't mind, and even at home, get, a, get down on one knee and just say, I worship you. Do it with me, if you don't mind. If you're at home watching or if you're here in a church building, 